All right, so in previous examples, we had focused on the notion of get variable acting very much like a mem copy and therefore being subject to potential buffer overflows. But in this case, we've got a fixed size, uh, size of performance variable used as the input size and the output buffer is performance variable. So either this is going to be, you know, enough size for reading in the data or it's just going to error out and, you know, exit out of this function. So that's not the source of problems here. But this performance variable does come in as attack control data, and it's going to contain within it a pointer to the base of some table. So that's going to infect this, the boot performance table. That's going to be the base of some table. And then at the base plus the size of the performance table, some sort of data structure, it's going to find a thing that it calls firmware performance table pointer. But what's interesting about this is that this is going to be an actual straight up ACID pointer. So this is, you know, one of the more egregious examples of code taking something from attacker controlled uh, content and using it literally as a pointer directly. So this is a, you know, intrinsic out of band, right? It's not a manufactured one. Usually the attacker has to manufacture this with some other vulnerability, but this code just conveniently directly allows an attacker to specify a pointer that will subsequently be written to. All right, so then we've got uh, this, what I told you was a non-attacker controlled GUID lookup. And so this is going to be a non-attacker controlled GUID hob or handoff block. It's going to check to make sure it's not null and it's not null. So we continue on. Not attacker controlled, therefore not attacker controlled. Not attacker controlled, therefore not attacker controlled. But now we're getting into a copy mem, which sounds suspiciously like a mem copy. So we've got a non-attacker controlled amount of content that's going to be copied. And we've got a source, which is not attacker controlled, plus some size. So some performance data plus some size to offset into it. But the destination where it's copying is fully attacker controlled. This is that acid pointer from up here. So for me, if I see that even if it's non attacker controlled data, but it's being copied anywhere in memory, that seems like a bad thing to me. That causes my exploity sense to tingle because this now means that whatever this content is right here can be smashing something anywhere in memory. Now, this is where we you know, get all philosophical about it. And we could arguably say that you might interpret this content that's being copied as sassy data instead of purely non attacker controlled data. So it's sassy in the sense that, you know, let's say there's a zero in there somewhere. Let's say there's a one in there somewhere. Because the attacker can just move around this pointer and point it wherever they want, then they can perfectly align whatever data they happen to find in this location and ultimately overlap it with something beneficial. You know, some security variable somewhere, they just, you know, clobber with the relevant one or the relevant zero or the relevant special magic number. So, you know, ultimately, this is, you know, where the, the definition of SASE data is always a bit uh, fluid. But originally, part of the point of, of thinking about SASE data is it's semi-attacker controlled in the sense of, you know, there's some big, long array of data and however many size of bytes, and the attacker gets to choose amongst those bytes. They don't have full control, but they do have some control, some semi-controlled. And because they control where it's written, ultimately, that, you know, can still be used for an exploit. So if you continued on, you would find, you know, this non-attacker controlled values being used here to get the GUID hub again while you're in a while loop. And ultimately, uh, you know, some non-attacker controlled size is used to uh, offset this pointer, which was the attacker controlled pointer. So it's going to skip forward by however much size was actually copied. So now at this point, we're going to say this is, you know, semi-attacker control pointer for the next iteration of the loop. So when we look at the exit condition of this loop, we see it's while GUID hub is not equal to null. Uh, this GUID hub is coming in from non-attacker controlled values. So ultimately the attacker doesn't actually control the exit condition for this loop. So it's just gonna be looping through some non-attacker controlled data and ultimately smashing things, smash, smash, smash for however many GUID hubs exist uh, starting at this location. But if we keep going down here, we will find the attacker controlled uh, boot performance table. That was our original table coming out of this attacker controlled variable. And we've got this uh, pointer for wherever this has been indexed to up, you know, however much this has been uh, offset or incremented as a result of this loop. So it's using that to do some pointer arithmetic, casting it to a UN32 and 
using that to calculate a length. And then it's going to be writing it into the header length field of that attack control value. So this is another potential uh, out of bound write of SASE data where the value that's actually going to be written here, uh, you know, we are calculating a length and the question is, you know, what length is it? Well, you're writing to an attack controlled location. So wherever this is, uh, plus where, whatever the offset is to header, the length is then semi attack controlled based on whatever the size of this performance table was, plus however many loops ultimately went through here. So that's, you know, not as useful to an attacker as this copy mem up here, but it is still something they could potentially benefit from. Now at this point, I need to point out the epic fail that was the fix of this vulnerability. So if we go back and we look through tickets and stuff like that, we can see that this was reported September 9th, 2020, and the bug was not patched before it was disclosed at a security conference in August 4th, 2021. And then ultimately, basically, they were still de debating about it, you know, almost a year later. They're like, oh, well, you know, this is public now. Maybe we should really do something about this. And so practically speaking, you know, most vendors would uh, not have actually fixed this by this point. You know, maybe some picked it up of their own accord, but probably not most of them. So functionally, this was a zero day disclosure because it was not yet fixed. And it took the Tiana Core organization one year and two months to actually fix this. And then it's going to take, you know, many months after that for vendors to actually incorporate the fix. If they ever do, because you know, some of them would ultimately not backport this fix to different systems. So, you know, I think this is worth pointing out how big of an epic fail this was and how extremely bad the UEFI ecosystem is at patching exploitable vulnerabilities. So what was the actual fix for this? When we go in and we look at the uh, actual, you know, change log for it in the open source EDK2 reference code, they just decided to completely refactor this thing. Uh, and so, you know, ultimately this firmware performance table pointer is being sourced from the MECPI uh, boot performance table, which I assume and hope is non-tech controlled, but I don't actually know that. Now, most of the time, ECPI tables are things that are like baked into the code and they aren't attacker controlled, but you know, I haven't actually analyzed this patch. And so I don't actually know that that's not attacker controlled. The thing that worries me about the, the statements that were made in this patch is that, you know, I again have said that if an attacker completely compromises a kernel, they can scribble all over the flash and therefore the NVRAM variables, which are generally not, um, not capable of being integrity checked. There are some technologies Intel has a uh, thing called BiosGuard that can restrict who can write there, but I don't know that to be used particularly commonly. So most of the time in my experience, the NVRAM, the NVVARs can be scribbled all over by the kernel, or you know, I care about the attack model of physically proximate attacker who manipulates the flash chip with physical access. So in my threat model, uh, attackers can always, you know, completely clobber the NVRAM variables. So it's uh, disconcerting to me that we have these quotes in the thing that say, uh, the fix allocates the performance data table at end of Dixie and then locks the variable, which stores the table address at end of Dixie. So things like locking of variables under my threat model have absolutely no purpose whatsoever. The attacker can still uh, completely manipulate the variables that were read in from the spy flash. So, Hope they fixed it right, but they may not have. And this, of course, is where researchers can go and potentially find beneficial leftover vulnerabilities.